As back to school creeps in, we want to have kids engaged and excited to be back in the buildings with us. And having those hands-on and collaborative projects are a great way to do that, even in the STEM classroom. Now, of course, you wanna jump into those building challenges, which you totally can do, but this is a great time to play off of what classroom teachers are already doing to help build community, structures in your own classroom, and also those routines. I'm Naomi Meredith, a former classroom teacher turned current K-5 STEM teacher, and I love helping teachers like you navigate STEM and technology in your own classroom. So let's get started with these back-to-school ideas and how you can incorporate them in your own classroom. We have five activities today, and then towards the end, I have a special announcement for you that you definitely don't want to miss since it is time-sensitive, and it, you, I think you're definitely going to love it. So let's get started. The first First activity is, of course, going over your classroom rules. Now, if you teach all the kids in the school like I do, it can get redundant on those rules and they probably haven't even changed much much from the years past. However, it is important every year and even continuing throughout the year to go over those classroom rules and expectations with students so when they enter your space or if you are in a push-in model when you enter into their space, they know what is expected of them. When you're thinking about your classroom rules, keep them no more than maybe even seven. Seven's quite a bit, but no more than that because that can be hard for you to remember and also for the kids to remember. So be very thoughtful when you're creating these rules. Keep them in a positive manner and think about rules that you can apply to everything throughout the day, throughout all the projects throughout the year. So um, be just very thoughtful about that. You can definitely create them with students. I will say when you have everything class in the school, so I have 24 classes, uh, you kind of run out of time and then you want to keep things consistent. So I actually go ahead and create rules that make sense. We go over those and what those look like. But we also, before we do that, I play a little game with them. So you can see here, I have the kids split up into groups and I actually group them myself because oftentimes beginning of the year, they don't always know each other. And so I group them into groups and then I have the classroom rules cut up and they have to sort them and put them together. So um, I think I did four out of the seven um, for this challenge because it actually took longer but as the kids get older and older, you could even do all of them. You could do the same colors for the younger kids, so they have to um, put the puzzles together of the different colors. As the kids get older, you could do all of them one color. So this, I think, was a fourth or fifth grade example, and they had... Um, the challenge was to see which group could put the rules together the quickest. I did put the rules up on the screen so they could reference what they are, and then the winning group got a little fun prize out of my prize box. After that, that is when I did introduce those rules, um, answered any questions the kids had, and then went into another activity. So this actually didn't take, um, I have 45 minutes with the kids, but this didn't take the full time we were able to get started on another activity. So this is a fun entryway into introducing those rules because it is very important, like I said, but the kids get engaged and talking and collaborate one another and have a really good time. Now, once you have done that, you've gone, gone over routines, I would maybe even suggest each day doing a different thing. So day one's going on the, over the rules, the next day is some of the routines, the next day more routines. If you jam pack it all once, they're gonna forget. So really break it up over those days if you have that time. It just really helps out and it's not boring because we wanna make it fun too. This one's really fun, um, especially if you do have Lego bricks on hand, super helpful. Um, in another video, I mentioned that when you are purchasing for your classroom, this is like the go-to material that you can use over and over again. So make sure you go and check out that video, our other one for STEM boot camp. But this one is a Lego brick all about me or all about me brick build. And so each kid or group gets a bucket of Lego at their table, or if you have little containers individual for kids. And then the questions, if it's true about them, they grab that many of that brick. So for example, you could see, grab seven blues and I tell them any shades fine. It could be clear, light colored blue, dark colored blue. If it's blue, it works. 
Uh, but grab seven blues if you have any brothers or sisters. So the kids start talking, especially if you have them in little groups, they start talking to each other. Oh, I have brothers and sisters. I am the oldest of five kids, which is true about me. But they start talking to each other and getting to know each other. And then I call on kids to share out. I'm like, oh, I noticed you grabbed blue. How many brothers and sisters that you have? So it's a hands-on way. And even the shy kids get really excited because they're still responding by using the colors. So it's a really fun way uh, for them to get to know each other. At the end, they have this pile of bricks. And then I give them time to build something out of those bricks that help describe them. So that's a, just a really great entryway. You could really use this for all ages. The questions do get harder. We start talking about um, columns and rows, which is great introduction to multiplication, but they don't even know it yet. So this, again, is a really fun low prep activity that your students will definitely love when you're coming back to school. For the younger students, and I like to use these engineer inspiration boards all year with my K through two students. These are great for a quick one day activity. If you have sub plans, if you have to push into a classroom last minute, that can happen. These boards are awesome to have on hand and they are themed throughout the year. Oh, they're also a really, really great station. And you can really use anything you have to build with, including Lego. So this is all about back to school themes and using the materials we have on hand, students are challenged to try to build these items and they don't have to be the same color. So it helps them think about the bigger picture and how they can break it up into smaller parts to add in those details. We even took it to the next level. I love Seesaw, but I shared this board with the students in Seesaw and then they would take a picture of what they made because the building part doesn't take too long. They took a picture, let's say their school bus that they made, and then they placed that picture on top of the board, and they almost did it like tic-tac-toe, some of them. So there's a lot of ways you can use this. There are planning sheets also, if you wanna really stretch this out, students could really thoughtfully plan a design and then talk about their designs. But again, like I said, you could do this hands-on, you could do this in partnerships, you could do this in groups, but it's a great way to get talking about back to school or whatever your theme is, but back to school is this one, and that they are getting engaged and that you could talk about how we use materials in the classroom too. So this could be an entryway into classroom routines, like here are the materials, here's how we get them. We're gonna use the materials in this way, in this activity, here's how we clean them up and make sure we put them away appropriately. So you're integrating those routines where it is applicable. It's a very like low entryway activity. Everybody can be successful, but it's super fun and engaging. For the older kids, this one is based on the computer. You can definitely have kids draw though. I have done it that way. Um, some kids prefer it, um, but it's all apps about me. And so they're not doing coding for this challenge and there isn't any fancy linking, which you could definitely implement. Again, this is back to school, but this is a really fun one where there's different slides that are different apps on the phone that are all about the kids. So this one shown are just, these is like the home page. So this is like the favorites page. And this actually helps me with the older kids. Uh, we use Google tools, but it helps me show them some of the tricks they may or may not know. Like inserting an image from Google, we talk about how to do an image search. So how do you in, um, insert images that are a picture? How do you insert clip art? What's the difference between a clip art and a photo? So we talk about safe searching and how we can use that in our projects. So this front page they really love and they start getting creative with their apps about them and then the other pages go on like uh, create your top 10 playlist and they put their favorite songs and we share out each day or we share out in small groups so again um this is a great way for kids to get to know each other at low prep almost no prep because you can send this digitally and then they can keep working on this even throughout the week or if you have a good relationship with classroom teachers is something, hey, we got started with this in STEM, you guys can keep working on this in your regular classroom. So you can implement that little bit of tag team co-teaching that way as well. This one is a really fun one. Um, you could try it in Seesaw. Um, if you know how to teach the kids how to insert images, you could definitely put this template in Seesaw like an activity, and then they could do all of the slides that way. They could even draw the pictures too if you don't wanna skip the insert image but definitely third through fifth or even second grade you know your kids possibly <laughs> and what the skills they have so it's a great one as well 
Um, again, you can modify this one for your classroom. This is like a STEM get to know you. This helps really teach the kids what STEM is. And I've done this a couple of ways in my room. This is my example. This is actually true things about me. So I do like rocks and minerals, so, so science topics. I do like rocks and minerals. I think they're gorgeous. Uh, the solar system is very intriguing to me. I really do enjoy butterflies, and I always tease the kids, what is a baby butterfly called? And they sometimes they can figure it out. It's a caterpillar. Um, and I do love sea lions. They're like wet puppies. I was obsessed about them in SeaWorld in San Diego. But um, I have these slides. So each letter of STEM, or if you have STEAM, the kids insert images or they could draw pictures or write about their favorite things that follow each letter of STEM or STEAM. Um, you could do it that way. So a letter a day, this is going to be a fun warm up. Or if you see the kids over the course of a month. This could be, um, again, one letter a day. So every Monday we do this activity. You could also do it where I have it as a conversation starter. So I actually have all the slides made about me. And then I do it as a warm up for them to help get to know me. So I have this slide posted on my screen as kids walk in and they start looking and reading about it. Even kindergarten is all intrigued. Um, <laughs> Also kind of funny with my picture, I did this last year when I, we were wearing masks with teaching and kindergarten's like, who's that lady on the screen? Like, you guys, that's me. And they're all, no way, that's not you. I'm like, yeah, you guys, that's me. That's what I look like. So <laughs> that was pretty cute. Anyway, you could have that as your warm up up on the screen and um, it's a good conversation starter and you can have kids like agree or disagree with you if you have something in common and then you could just move on to the lesson so maybe even not have the kids fill this out but you fill it out so there's a lot of ways that you can go about this and this helps introduce what stem or steam is and how you would explain that to kids so all of these fun resources you could definitely make on your own, put your own twist on it. I have them all made and ready to go. So in my uh, TPT shop, Teachers Pay Teachers shop, Naomi Meredith, you can find all these back to school activities and even the classroom rules that I use in my room, including that puzzle game. So this will just save you some time. You could get more of your summer back and just have these assigned, ready to go, have like low prep materials. So those are ready for you in there. And if you're watching this in real time, you can actually get a discount on that. So my shop is on sale until Friday. So if you like these activities, make sure you give a thumbs up down below. You like this video. This will help other teachers find these activities as well. But that's not the announcement that I have. So if you've been keeping up with STEM Bootcamp, you've heard that before. But I am so passionate about helping teachers who are teaching STEM and I understand how you might be an island at your school. Maybe for a lot of you, this is your first year teaching STEM and a lot of you have reached out that you are feeling overwhelmed, you don't know where to get started, you're really excited, but there's just so much to do. So I hope this boot camp helped you to keep your journey going, but I wanted to help you even more. And even those of you who started last year, but you were teaching online, so you had a totally different experience with STEM. So it almost feels like that this year is your first year teaching STEM. So I would love to invite you to become a founding member of the STEM Tech Co Navigators program. And so as a founding member, you are the first people in this particular program. I've had Navigators ambassadors before, but this is an actual program where you will build up your whole STEM capacity and have these building blocks to create a foundation to really keep you prepared all year long. So using your prior classroom experience from teaching, you can ha learn how to transfer this into your STEM role with action things right away. So setting up your routines and systems, what works, having that purposeful planning that is integrated and meaningful for STEM, not just a bunch of random from projects, but having things that are really meaningful and that really base off what kids are learning in the classroom, using those innovative tools and creating a classroom environment that is positive, but also really goes along with an innovative journey for kids. I would love to invite you to become a founding member. So this is the first launch of this official program. So as a founding member, you actually can 
give me feedback and help create this foundation of um, how this program works, what we need to change, and connect with other teachers. You will be able to connect with the other teachers in the program so that you guys can start off the year together and really have a positive experience. So this, for you being a founding member, <laughs> I would love to give you $10 off of your purchase into the program. So if you use the website code on my, or website link on the screen, naomimeredith.com slash navigators code, you will get a $10 off coupon and this will get help you get into the program early. We will start um, everything on August 8th, 2021. But I would love to have you there as the founding members and set this up and you get early access. So some of you are even starting school um, in August like I am. So this is a great time for you to start and we can navigate this road together and really set this up so that you are successful. You don't feel like an island. I will help be your guide with um, things that I have learned over the years and pass on that information information to you so we can really get to know each other. So definitely check that out. You will get that code right away. You can apply it right away. I'll send you, once you put the code in your name and email, you'll get an email um, back to you with the code and how you can implement that and get started with this course. So thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited for your STEM and technology journey. Um, of course, always reach out to me. It's Naomi Meredith at Naomi Meredith underscore on Instagram. Um, email is totally fine too. Contact Naomi Meredith at gmail.com. And then this video is our third and last day of STEM boot camp. So if you would if you miss the other two days, you can go back and watch the replays. Those are all on my blog, so you can have them all set up with everything ready to go. So it's naomimeredith.com slash STEM bootcamp. Thank you so much again for being here. I appreciate your questions and your feedback. Um, if there's anything you need, let me know, and I will talk to you all soon.